In this screencast, we're going to look at the PID controller algorithm. Now there are two different main forms of the PID controller algorithm that are often used. One is called the position form, and the other one is called the velocity form. And additionally, there are several different nuances to each form. So <clears throat> the controller equation for the PID algorithm, as given before, is as follows. So your controller signal as a function of time is equal to your original controller signal plus your controller algorithm, which would be your proportional gain of your controller times the quantity of your error at time t, so this is your proportional part, plus 1 over tau i times your integral of your error, that's your integral part, plus tau d times the derivative of your error at time t, and that would be your derivative part of your PID control. So this form of the equation is called the position form. It's called the position form because at time t you are given the position of the controller or the actual controller signal at time t. Now, in this position form, consider what would happen if you had a set point step change at time t equals zero. What would happen there? Keep in mind that the error is by definition equal to the set point minus the sensor value. So let's think about what each controller term, what each term in the controller algorithm would do at time t equals zero. So the first term, the proportional only term, would jump, so it jumps from zero, we're assuming that at time t equals zero, the error is zero, so it jumps from zero to the change in your set point, delta y set point, right, because you change your set point at time t equals zero, so the error is no longer zero, but it just jumps up initially. The integral part stays zero, so this stays zero, because uh, the integral from zero to zero of anything is just zero, right? What does your derivative control do? Your derivative control would be the derivative of the error at time t equals zero, and that will be equal to infinity, because at time t equals zero, you're jumping suddenly in your set point, and that sudden jump, which would look like this, has an infinite derivative. Because of this, your controller will saturate, saturate, actuator, actuator, and that's a problem. So therefore, what I'm saying is, this form of the equation, the position form, that takes the derivative of the error into account, so de dt, this is susceptible to a phenomenon called derivative kick. Derivative kick, where as you change the set point, suddenly the derivative is infinity and the controller saturates the actuator. It throws the actuator as far open as it can possibly go, or it throws it closed. To overcome this problem, there um, a modified form of the positional form of your controller algorithm is used often, and that modified form is called derivative on measurement. So instead of the derivative of the error that we're looking at, we're looking at the derivative of the measurement. So that form of the position form algorithm, the derivative on measurement form, will be C of t, your controller signal at time t, is equal to your initial controller signal, C bar, plus Kc times the quantity, your error at time t, plus 1 over tau i, the integral from 0 to t, your error dt, minus tau d dy sensor dt. And that's why it's called derivative on measurement, because it's the derivative of the measurement and not of the error that's taken into account in the um, controller algorithm. What you see here, then, is that when you look at the error, and you're assuming that the set point is not changing over time, then you're replacing de dt in this algorithm, in the original positional form algorithm, you're replacing de dt with minus dys dt. So you're assuming that this doesn't change in time, so you're just ignoring it. That way, when it does change in time suddenly, the derivative will no longer be infinity. That change of the set point will not affect this derivative. Right? So assuming, this is assuming y set point equals constant, which it usually does, then dE dt equals minus dys dt. So the set point is usually constant, 
And in the one case in which it's not constant, it's not going to screw up your system. In all other cases, in most other time points, this is exactly the same as the positional form. Now the alternative to the positional form of the PID algorithm is something called the velocity form. And this is so called because it's the change or the change in time of the controller signal that's calculated rather than the change at time or the, rather than the value at time t. So if we consider something called the digital version of the positional form evaluated at time t, that would be c at time t is equal to c bar plus kc times your error at time t plus now instead of the integral here we have 1 over tau i and it's delta t over tau i times the sum i equals 1 to n of all the errors from the past so this is, in a way, this, this sum is, is an approximation of the integral. Minus tau d over delta t times y sensor at time t minus y sensor at time t minus delta t. Where this guy here, what's inside these small parentheses divided by delta t, that is an approximation of the derivative. So that would be our um, digital version of the positional form with the derivative on measurement. So instead of a continuous integral and a continuous derivative, we've just assumed that the controller is looking at discrete time points from i equals 1 to n and summing those up to get your integral or taking a look at the difference between the last two time points to approximate your derivative. So that would be your positional form digital positional form evaluated at time t. Now if we take this digital positional form and evaluate it at time t minus delta t, so this is what the position form tells us one delta t time ago. It's the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and write it all out. Where well, this ends up being the exact same algorithm as we had up here except for we replace t with t minus delta t. See t is replaced with t minus delta t and t minus delta t is now replaced with t minus 2 delta t. And for the integral term, we just chopped off one last point. So this went from i equals 1 to n, and this sum goes from i equals 1 to n minus 1. So we're just chopping off the final point here of this previous algorithm. Now don't get lost here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the difference between these two to calculate something called the velocity form. Right, so that will, ch that will calculate the, the rate of change in time of our controller equation. So we're going to subtract these two equations from each other. And we're going to define delta c being c at time t minus c at time t minus delta t. Right? So the subtraction of these two is going to give us a delta c. That's our change in c from time point t minus delta t to time point t. Subtracting these two terms gives us zero, so we're just, that part's going to drop out. So what's going to be left is the difference between the terms that are in the, the big brackets. So the delta c is equal to kc times e of t minus e of t minus delta t. Plus delta t over tau i times the difference between these two sums. Right. So this is all the sum of all the previous time points up to the final time point n. This is sum of all the previous time points up to the time point n minus 1. So the difference between those two is just the final time point. So that would be e of t minus tau d over delta t times what's in these parentheses. So you have a, y, a ys, a negative ys of t minus delta t. You have a y s of t minus delta t, but remember you're, you're subtracting so this will have a negative. So you have two negatives of y s t minus delta t. You have a positive y s of t, so let's go ahead and write that out, y s of t minus two y s of t minus delta t. And then you have this last one which is minus y s of t minus two delta t. But because it's, this is, it's a subtraction then this becomes a positive plus y s of t 
minus 2 delta t. So here is what your velocity form would look like. Now this velocity form is subject to something called proportional kick. Now before we were worrying about um, the derivative kick. And so that's why we've changed the error here into the minus uh, of ys, right? So you have the minus sign here and now you have ys instead of error. But this um, has a problem with proportional kick because if you do have a set point at time t equals zero, at time t equals zero, if you have a set point change, then e of t changes to delta y set point suddenly. And so that could be a problem. And so what we want to do is we want to eliminate the um, proportional kick from here as we've, in the same way that we've already eliminated the derivative kick already. And so what we're going to get is delta C is equal to KC times. Now we're going to, because the error, remember the error is equal to Y set point minus Y set sensor. We're just going to assume that the set point is not changing. Most of the time it doesn't change. In this one particular case it does, but that's the, that's the time when we don't want it to affect anything. So we're going to assume that y set point is not changing. So instead of ys, instead of error at time t, we're going to get minus ys at time t. Minus ys at time t. Instead of minus error at time t minus delta t, we're going to get plus ys at time t minus delta t. Didn't re leave myself enough room there. And then the rest of the algorithm is the same. So you have your integral term is not changed and your derivative term is not changed. I took the, the moment to pause to fix my uh, error here where I didn't have, leave myself enough room. And so essentially that, that, those are all the different forms of the PID controller algorithm that we could find.